Welcome in to On Texas Football. I'm Bobby Burton, joined by C.J. Vogel and Jerry Hamilton. You can see DKR there in the background. You guys were just at practice. Uh, this is our practice report for On Texas Football. Practice number four for the Longhorns, 30-minute window media. Uh, who wants to start between the two of you about the big news from today? I'll let C.J. start with what he saw. I saw a player walk off uh, holding the hamstring, so I'll let C.J. start there. Then I'll get in the offensive line, what I saw there. Yep. Perfect. Uh, Texas starting cornerback Malik Muhammad did not partake a whole lot in practice. He uh, went kind of uh, halfway through uh, stretching immediately as Texas uh, departed into their individual positions. He walked off the field. I saw him pull at the hamstring a little bit. Uh, again, it, nothing confirmed at the moment, clearly, uh, but he did not uh, spend much time on the field, probably about a period or two before heading out. Uh, went back into the locker room. Went back into the locker room. Uh, it was Gavin Holmes who took over his spot in when Texas went into their team period for the position or pursuit drills. Gavin Holmes was a uh, that the departure of Malik Muhammad. And then uh, on the offensive uh, line, look, they're going to move guys around. We know this, Bobby. They're going to move guys around. They're going to like Jaden Chapman was working at right tackle today after working at left tackle the first open practice. So they're going to move guys around. But it was noteworthy today. First team left guard was Neto. Hayden Connor was working at center, whether that was in two man drills or in team uh, or, or in, in fives. Uh, Con Hayden Connor was working at center. Uh, so there you see that first team uh, offensive line today was Cam Williams, DJ Campbell, Jake Majors, Neto, and Kelvin Banks. That was the first round with the ones. The second round with the ones, Cole Hudson was the left guard with the same uh, uh, starting four. So they're going to move things around, but it is noteworthy that Hayden Connor. At least when we were there, worked exclusively at center today. Does that mean he's moved to center? We're not saying that. We're just reporting what we saw today. And that was your first team offensive line out and five on five there. And in combo, in two man combo blocks, Hayden Camp Connor was snapping it and working at center today. So he worked at center the entire 30 minute window we were there. Uh, so, so news there at the left guard position. And Cole Hudson continues to work at left guard and not center. Very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, you also mentioned Jaden Chapman at second team uh, right tackle over yep. Andre Kojo. Is that correct? Yeah, that, that's the way I saw it. They may have rotated a little bit there um, from time to time, but that was the kind of the other thing I noticed today. And and Jaden Chapman's a guy that he's worked at all five positions since he's been at Texas. And that's going to that's continuing to be a theme now because he was at left tackle, uh, third team left tackle that first open practice we were at. And today he was second team at right tackle, at least when I was watching. Um, and that Brandon Baker was third team uh, after that when, when I was watching uh, there at right at right tackle and in the two-man uh, drills. So uh, that's a little glimpse into that um, uh, as well today. So there are a lot of moving parts. Um, they're going to move guys around. Jaden Chapman, Trevor Goosby obviously looks like he's locked into that second team left tackle right now. Uh, Connor Stroh running second team right guard. Second team right guard. When that second team went out, uh, moving left to right, it was Gooseby, Hudson. Oh, no, Ogbo, because Hudson and Neto are rotating with the ones. So Ogbo went with the second group, so just, which is technically your third team left guard. Then, obviously, Hayden Connor, Connor Robertson at center. Um, and then your right guard was Stroh, and your right tackle in that scenario was Jaden Chapman. Interesting. Hey, hey guys, uh, y'all get a chance to see the – let's just go position by position. That's the best way I know how to get the – the most yep. out of this before uh, I do that, I want to say thank you to our sponsor. Uh, uh, this uh, special report brought to you by the folks at Autograph. Uh, big news, Longhorn fans. We're excited to be working with Autograph, a company co-founded by the GOAT himself, Tom Brady. Autograph is where real Texas fans get unreal rewards. It's the first app to track and reward fans for loving what they love most, turning passion into access and experiences founded on the belief that devotion should be rewarded and the future of fandom belongs to the fans. They've been sending true fans to the biggest games in college football and basketball for just $16, just 16 bucks. As we gear up for football season, this means you can score discounted tickets to marquee matchups. Match All you have to do, scan to download the free autograph app in the Apple Store and use referral code on Texas. That's referral code on Texas. See where fandom takes you. All right, let's start with the quarterbacks, guys. How did it look? Uh, Quinn Ewers, Arch Manning, Trey Owens, that trio. 
Uh, this should come as no surprise. Quinn looks very confident. <laughs> he looks confident out there, threw the ball accurately. Look, it rained a lot this morning, so it was a slick field for the receivers. So maybe you had to hold on to the ball split second longer uh, at times today, but uh, both quarterbacks uh, looked really good, really accurate. Um, uh, I saw uh, I saw Arts throw one bad ball in two man drills, and Sark was like, "That was a yard off." With another word in, incorporated into it, but uh, uh, both guys looked really good. Trey Owens continues; he looks co he looks comfortable out there. That's the one thing I would say. Um, I, I thought running backs looked really good catching the ball today. They were in a little bit of a red zone drill, um, CJ, and and I thought uh, I'll tell you what, Bobby, I'm going to post some photos later on Instagram and on Texas football. But man, Christian Clark looks good out there and, and physically again. I mean, he and there's a picture I'm going to post of of. Christian Clark standing next to C.J. Baxter and Jarrett Gibson, and people are going to be surprised at what uh, they look like. But just adding that into watching the quarterbacks throw to the running backs. Yeah, I did think yeah. that the running backs came right into our corner of the end zone as well. So there was a, a number of, you know, cheers and a number of, you know, to shard choice getting after his guys for, for uh, you know, making sure that the play was made. But I thought the running backs looked good. The, the quarterbacks, to me, the downfield passing, Bobby, as we talked about last week, it's it's looking good. And that intermediate phase that we were talking about as well with Kenny was going to be the strength of his game. Uh, and any corner route, dig routes, the comebacks, he looked spot on today. Uh, and I'll say the same for Arch Manning as well. But uh, really, really, again, the confidence for, for Quinn Ewers is, is really high right now. What about – I, I got to ask you guys, what about the running back room? Any injuries? Everybody looked healthy? You know, Jarrett Gibson wears a little bit of a left shoulder – uh, harness, which he did his senior year in high school, but nothing alarming there. Jaden Blue may have had a little hitch in his giddy up from time to time, but it didn't. It was nothing major that kept him out of drills, kept him from running routes. Same. I mean, maybe a couple of nits, but it didn't keep anybody out of drills. Savion Red still uh, has a little brace on his hand as well. Yeah, on the okay, right wrist. Gotcha. What about uh, the wide receiver spot? I saw uh, I saw Ryan Wingo in that group. I saw Jonte Cook, Matthew Golden, Isaiah Bond. All of those guys, wide receivers. Any any news there? Nothing. Nothing that we had, didn't see last week. Uh, Matthew Golden still bouncing around from position to position. Uh, again, the first group that we saw was DeAndre Moore in the slot, yep. Isaiah Bond, and Jonte Cook with uh, Golden or yeah, Golden kind of bouncing around as well. Uh, Ryan Wingo backed up Jonte Cook with Aaron Butler right behind him, uh, and then it was Bond, Golden, and uh, uh, Livingstone. At the opposite side, so and and Freddie Debose still not full speed. Correct. So, uh, by the way, somebody's asking about Colton Vossick. So we'll get to that position, but to answer your question, Colton Vossick was on the field. He was. Got it. Good. Good stuff. Uh, good. I'm glad to hear that for the young man from Austin Westlake, whose dad's a coach there at, at Westlake. Guys, tight end position. Any news on Amari Nyblack moving up, down, or sideways in that rotation? I know Gunner Helm. It looked like in the that drill that we just showed. Uh, was running with the ones. What what are your your thoughts there? Same thing, no change there. Uh, I think Nye Black was putting in some good work in blocking drills when he moved over to offensive line. Uh, Jeff Banks was really coaching up that in the blocking uh, aspect. Jordan Washington saw him run a crossing route. One of the things for young tight ends, right? It, and I noticed this. And Jordan Washington is a keeper. He's going to be a really good player. He didn't run through the route on the shallow cross. Did you see that one, CJ? Where the ball ended up getting too far out in front of him. I think he had a little hesitation. The throw was the right throw, uh, but one of those things for a young tight end we did notice today. Uh, but Jordan Washington, he's a keeper. That's just part of the learning process. That's all that is. Gotcha. And the offensive line, we talked about that early. Um, yep. Anybody there, other than the Neto move to first team uh, with uh, Hayden Connor working at second team center, that could just be them getting in backup work and, and getting right. Connor more used to, to center. But any other moves that you thought that were interesting there or guys that you thought looked particularly good? One we got on quarterbacks, K.J. Lacey was on the field watching practice. Yes, We need to mention that. K.J. Lacey was there uh, watching practice today. Uh, with offensive line, not really, Bobby. I think, uh, you know, looking at those guys for a second time now, uh, D.J. Campbell looks really good to yeah. me. Uh, physically looks really good. Quickness looks really good. Uh, he's a more confident player than he was last year. You can tell. Uh, the, the, obviously, he's going to be rugged, tough, and Casey Stutterdish, or, or more so in contact, but he just looks like a more confident player to me in, in what I saw. Um, you know, I thought, uh, I, to me, that what stands out is all those guys look like they belong. I mean, Daniel Cruz looks like he belongs, right? I mean, you could hear Kyle pr Flood praising multiple guys through the two-man drills. There wasn't a whole lot of 
getting on guys in the two-man drills or in the team or in the five-on-five, I should say. That was um, for uh, That's a good sign for Kyle Flood. He's coaching him up, but he nobody had to go rerun a drill. Like, it was pretty smooth. Uh, I think the offensive line is uh, is looking uh, pretty strong right now. Yeah, let one me more note this. On, uh, one more note on visitors. Uh, Peyton, Peyton Houston out of Shreveport, 2027 quarterback, was in uh, in in attendance for practice as well. He was at the Elite 11 yesterday at Westlake High School. Uh, I guess just sticking around Texas, uh, not yet offered. He does have six offers in the fold right now, Texas Tech, Texas A&M, TCU, among uh, teams that have extended an offer at the moment. Out of Shreveport, Louisiana. Uh, Peyton Houston, you said. Hey, uh, let me ask y'all this. Let's before we go to defense, and I know uh, y'all got a good look at that. What was the overall tenor of practice? Like, what was the tempo? What was the guys jacked up? What what normal practice? What would you say? I, I'm not sure that I don't. I'm not sure it was a high high energy. To I think the rain. It's you a know, Monday, Bobby. It's, it's a rainy. Monday. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, I thought. But look, I think to short choices, guys always have a lot of energy. They have no choice. Uh, Kyle Flood's guys have a lot of energy. You have no choice, right? Now, D-line was on the other end of the field, right? So we we weren't close enough to see that. Um, I think at quarterback, uh, Sark's going to – the same thing. I mean, you're, you you have to bring your energy at that position every day. Uh, it, it's it's unacceptable not to. But uh, was it the most jacked-up practice? No, it's a Monday and it's been raining. Uh, but, uh, look, I, I'll say this is uh, – um, DeAndre Moore was getting on John Tay Cook, joking around with him for almost dropping a ball. You could hear some things like that in the end zone. Uh, so, you know, look, I I continue to just like the uh, the camaraderie of this group, what you see uh, and what you hear. And the other thing uh, is, to, to Jerry's point earlier, there, there just wasn't a lot of repetition when it came to the drills. Running back, the receivers, quarterbacks, it, it was flawless. There wasn't a whole lot of needing to go through and do something again uh, because of a fault. You know, it was – Good stuff. I, I think it's interesting. It sounds like it's it's a normal practice, but it sounds like they may actually be a little advanced from this time. A year ago, yeah. we're frankly, I, I mean, we went to a couple and uh, they they stuttered a little bit at times, which is, look, it's the spring. That's when you're supposed to stutter. You don't want to, you don't want to stutter in the fall, right? You mentioned y'all didn't see much of the defensive line. Did you see any at all with Trey Moore, Colin Simmons, Ethan Burke, and those guys? Yeah, Trey Moore was running with the second team again, uh, just out of the pursuit drills. He was behind, uh, you know, Baron Sorrell, Ethan Burke over there. Um, again, running with Justice Finkley in that second unit. Uh, the second unit on the def- interior defensive line as well was Tia Savea and uh, Aaron Bryant, excuse me. So uh, the first team remained the same with Vernon Broughton and Alfred Collins right now. That's what you're going to see continued uh, at least for the next week. I have jobs come in with the new – faces and again with Aaron Bryant uh one uh, I guess we'll get to linebacker here but one note I did want to make was Maurice Blackwell was inside the box next to Leonga LaFowle on that second team uh unit so uh, a, a little bit of a switch up there he wasn't outside at the same spot he did move to the interior and was right next to Leonga LaFowle when it came to pursuit drills and first team there Anthony Hill David uh, along with David Benda yeah yes got it all right. Um, all right. So basically, what the edge position? It sounds like you got you guys. Sabaya was ahead of uh, Jare Bledsoe in second team, and it sounds like Aaron Bryant would be playing over the nose, yeah. even though he's not an ideal sized nose. That just goes more to my take on where they're going to be looking in the portal, guys. They're going to be looking for guys that can line up over the over the ball. They're not going to be looking for three techniques yeah. uh, because if Jare Bledsoe right now is running three behind Sabaya. They, and that tells you that Save is more of a three than a zero, which we knew already. Uh, that's a little bit of a tell about what they got to go attack uh, in the portal. And, and let's say this, Dre Bledsoe got some second team reps on Saturday from what we were told as well. So they they rotate some of those guys in and out, obviously. Yeah, just like they did on, on offensive line probably yeah. a little bit. And, and yeah. I, we need to recap that. Let's recap from the top because we've had a lot of people join in now up to over 400 plus. So let's go from the top. Uh, CJ on Manny Muhammad, I'll go to offensive line. Yeah, Manny Muhammad did not finish stretching this morning. He left uh, practice a little gimpy, a little bit on the what looked to be a, a hamstring issue. He was reaching back, trying to stretch it out during uh, during warm-ups to begin practice. He left the field and did not return during our media uh, availability uh, availability window. And then on the offensive line, uh, I noticed it when they were working on two-man combo blocks that Hayden Connor was working at center today. And I was like, okay, is this just a combo block thing? 
or, or is this going to be a, a, an all media window thing? There you see when they rolled out the first five today, it was Banks left tackle, Neto left guard, Majors center, uh, DJ Campbell right guard, Cam Williams right tackle. Does that mean Neto's your new starting guard? We're not saying that. What we're saying is what we saw in practice today. And then when the second time the the ones came uh, took reps in, in five on five here, Cole Hudson was the left guard. So Neto was the first left guard. Cole Hudson was the second left guard. Hayden Connor worked at center. So does that mean he's going to only play center? We're not saying that at all. Jaden Chapman had been the third team left tackle today. He took some second team right tackle uh, uh, reps in, in whether that was in combo or in fives. Uh, so look, it's going to be continued shuffling. You're going to see guys move around. But it was noteworthy today that during our media window, Hayden Connor worked at center and Neto was your first left guard up, followed by Cole Hudson. Sounds like they're re really just trying to get as many people comfortable with that center position as possible, as well as getting. I mean, look, you, Hayden Connor's done those left guard reps for how many years now? Yeah, I mean, exactly. you know what I mean. So, so good for them to, to try to build some depth uh, through moving people around. Also, uh, let's go to the secondary. CJ, you were telling me just before we went on air, a little change with Jade Barron. He's still nursing a, a, a slight injury, apparently. Yeah, yeah, he didn't look to be 100% out there. He was running with the third team in the pursuit drills. He was not with that first team unit. That was Jalen Gilbo, who was at the nickel spot. Again, with no Malik Muhammad out there, it was Gavin Holmes in his his uh, his spot out there at the outside corner spot. And then moving to the interior, it was Jalen Gilbo at the nickel spot, uh, uh, taking over from what we expected to be Jer uh, Jade Barron. And again, Jade Barron was out there. He just may not have been 100%, but he was going through all drills and everything. Well, you got to remember he's he he dealt with a toe injury almost all season. Uh, absolutely, I mean, those things are long to heal. And again, another three-year starter where you know he knows how to play the position, right? Uh, Gilbo was running second, uh, first team. Who was y'all remember who was running second team at, at star at this point? You I did that? not see it. Okay, all right. We'll we'll look into that and, and try to report back. Uh, what about the safety group? Uh, same guys as, as Saturday that we heard. Taft yeah, and yeah, Williams. yeah, I think Derek Williams, Williams Taft with uh, uh, Kuba and uh, Jelani McDonald's second team. And they, we didn't get to the third team, but Saturday it was Phil Sabine and Jordan Zotzer Bell running third team for what we are told. It was Austin Jordan at second team nickel. Uh, Austin right Jordan. Him. Which that's okay. a note because Gilbo and Jordan are still working nickel and not safety in our media viewing window, Bobby. So that's of note. Maybe the young safeties, they really do like what they're seeing from those young guys. And, of course, the addition of Makuba and Jelani McDonald uh, being second team as well. Gotcha. Um, hey, uh, Major uh, Alexander says, I just signed up for On Texas Football. It's by far the message board and site that I've seen amongst them all. Thanks, Major. We try to keep it uh, pretty short and to the point on there. Not a lot of fluff uh, of what we get uh, going on that stuff. Hey, hey guys, i got to ask you. This is your your second media window uh, period that you've seen. Anybody or anything standing out to you, Jerry? On and I I, I want to start with you, Jerry, on this because on coffee and football this morning, you made a comment that I I agree with. You think this is the most talented Texas team you've seen in a while? I agree with that one to eighty five. I don't know necessarily know that there's a Xavier Worthy or Adonai Mitchell or even a Byron Murphy on this team where. There might be those top end guys other than Quinn that are ready to, to bloom or blossom. But the depth, is that really what you still see today? Is that that's where this thing is headed? Yeah, I think that no doubt about it. That's th three straight top five recruiting classes, 17 early enrollees here with that group. I mean, look, we don't even mention Colin Simmons. We have a 30 minute media window, right? I mean, just think about the talent we're not mentioning right now. And when you see the guys warming up, uh, position by position, position uh even in stretching uh you know with the portal guys i mean this yeah this is a extremely talented team and program now is it where georgia is i'm not saying that uh but what i'm saying is this is the most talented texas team one through what do they have 85 right now i think they have full 85 out here by the way um that i've seen in a long time and i want to mention another thing today um ian ratliff was punting that football guys i mean he, he, he in in special teams now Ian Ratliff looks really good punting the football. If he ended up, and I'm just saying by chance, he ended up the guy, he's he's not he's not void of talent punting the football. By the way, first team punt return was Isaiah Bond, 
Jonte Cook second, Aaron Butler third is what CJ saw yep. on that. And it was gotcha. uh, I, I got some notes on the Gunners and the upbacks as well. First team, it was Trey Wisner. I uh, met with Gavin Holmes opposite of him. We talked about how important that group was last year uh, with Keaton Crawford and, and Keelan Robinson. Uh, that's going to be a, a point of emphasis again this spring and going into the fall where you know your punter might not be up to the leg that we saw last year with Ryan Sanford. Uh, the upbacks was Savion Red at 240 pounds, uh, Ethan Burke, and uh, Gunnar Helm. That was your uh, first team upbacks on the punt squad. Interesting. They they uh, basically break those guys down into four groups, right, uh, and then try to work it around in the entire system. So they, they're four deep there and everybody gets a chance. Uh, I think that's good stuff. Um, you know, my question to you, CJ, is do you, you're a little bit younger than Jerry and myself. What are you seeing athletically out there? Is it is it in line with what Jerry sees? Where, where are you coming out on it? Yeah, I I love watching this offensive line because you know how deep they are and you know how much talent is there. In years past, you know, you could see that defensive line, you know, kind of taking over, uh, especially when you had the bodies like uh, uh, Keandre Coburn, Amaro Ojmo, Sweat, Murphy. You knew what you had on the interior of the defensive line. Now whenever I look on that side of the ball, it's the edges that really stand out. And when you look at it from afar, it it just feels, you know, bigger if that's, you know, to put it, in layman's terms, you know, that group is significantly larger, more athletic looking than it was previously, uh, whether it be, you know, Ethan Burke growing up, uh, Baron Sorrell adding to his frame. But then you look at, you know, some of the smaller guys and you're probably most experienced, most productive uh, piece so far is Trey Moore, who does not look like he's going to be the most physically imposing guy when he walks into a room right behind him is Colin Simmons, who pound for pound is probably your most athletic and talented uh defensive end in this roster so that group to me just looking at it from afar with Pete Kukowski being having his hands on that group uh really encouraging and I think there's going to be a, 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 a quite a step up in, in in production on the field this year as a result Jerry uh, and uh, CJ are live there at DKR right now we're talking a little practice right now look at that on the porch Mr. Sorrell 88 is great I'm sure he's happy guy his son got a little call out there uh, they're live at DKR, CJ Vogel and uh, Jerry Hamilton, uh, just coming out of the second practice, or excuse me, the fourth practice of spring ball, the second media viewing window uh, as well. Uh, all right, uh, guys, any other comments that y'all want to make? Uh, do y'all want to take a couple of questions here? Uh, see Thanks what they had uh, yeah. going from here. Sound good? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so let, let's ask this. I, I think there's a couple of thoughts in, in, in overall. Uh, Brendan Bauer talks, how the cornerbacks look today? Who Also, who is running where? You mentioned Manny Muhammad. That's probably the news of the morning. He out. He's out with the, what appears to be a tweaked hand, uh, hamstring. You said Holmes and Brooks were the first team guys at corner. Who, who, were, who were following those guys right now in the pursuit drills, CJ? I uh, repeat that, Bob. You stuck a little bit on the camera. Oh, okay. The, who was second team corner behind Holmes and Brooks with uh, Muhammad out today because of the tweaked hamstring? Sorry. Yeah, Wardell Mack was out there and, and Kobe Black got some run as well. Uh, a, a bit of a step up for both guys, obviously, uh, with the departure of uh, Malik Muhammad. Uh, I forget, forget uh, Warren Robinson, Robertson was out there as well. So the three of them are all getting run in the second team pursuit drills. Uh, again, kind of the elevation of Gavin Holmes to that first squad uh, allowed for the opportunity for the two early enrollees to step in with that second unit. Got it. Um, guys, anybody, uh, we've got some reports that somebody was dropping balls at practice on Saturday. Anybody that looked like they had questionable hands out there at receiver? I- I don't know about questionable hands. A little bit of a slippery football today. Uh, Ryan Niblett had a had a drop on a stop route today, uh, but again, it's a little bit of a slippery ball day out here because the, they're on they're on the uh, DKR today, and that is that sport turf. And if that ball is a uh, a little slick, it, it it's going to be different. Uh, so, but the only ball I saw hit the ground today was Niblett when I was watching. Yeah. Uh, this one's from uh, Pack uh, or Pooh. I can't believe David Benda hasn't been unseated yet. Guys, I, I got to be honest, from what I saw last Tuesday, I don't know that he's going to be or, more importantly, that he needs to be. What, what do y'all think? Y'all seen in yeah, two I days now? 
I, I, I sit there as well, Bobby, just because, I mean, it's tough to replace the experience that he's had and the kind of the steps and development that he's taken over the last couple of years. Last year, I mean, he was your starter coming into fall camp as well. It wasn't until a five-star freshman, at Anthony, Anthony Hill, who we all agree on, needed to be on the field, uh, kind of took those snaps away from him. So uh, coming in as the, you know, the eldest guy in the room, it's his spot to lose at the moment, and it's going to have to take guys like Maurice Blackwell, Leon Fowler, or even Kendrick Blackshear to unseat him at the moment. Moving forward, I would expect to see David Benda right next to Anthony Hill, and you're starting 11 defensively moving forward. Uh, Pooh, I followed up with best linebacker in coverage. I mean, we probably all have opinions on that. Leon LaFowle is really natural in coverage. Yes. Interesting. That, that's interesting stuff. Uh, we also said already answered this one, but I want to go back to it uh, because he was off the field a little bit on Saturday. Colton Vosick returned, correct? Colton Vosick was out there. I did not see a lot of him in the drills uh, that I was watching of the defensive ends. Uh, again, they didn't, there weren't a lot of movement drills that they were undergoing. It was more hands getting off the ball, uh, you know, understanding where hand placement needs to be. I did not see a lot of him movement wise, but he was padded up and out there today. Got it. Um, guys, uh, speaking with Jerry Hamilton and CJ Vogel outside DKR right now, uh, Longhorns latest practice. Uh, the next practice for the Longhorns is what day, guys? It'll be Wednesday, Wednesday morning, and then another one on Friday. Okay, so this week is – last week was Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. This week they're going Monday, Wednesday, Friday, it looks like, right? Yes. Yeah, and that makes sense. It's Easter weekend, right? I mean, so that that, that makes sense to me. By the way, some uh, also we mentioned, uh, but we want to reiterate it, K.J. Lacey, uh, competed in Elite 11. CJ was there yesterday. He's on the practice field uh, making a little unofficial visit to Texas before he flies back to Mobile, Sarah Land High today. So he was out on the field uh, watching spring practice from the sidelines today. Gotcha. All right, guys, I, I think that's going to – we got we have one more thing I wanted to get to, and this is kind of important to me. Um, you know, wh where is Texas at right now on the defensive line in y'all's opinion? And – Look, I, I go back and forth on this. Y'all mentioned who was up there today. It, are they – what do they look like? I know they're, they don't have Byron Murphy and, By, and and Tavondre Sweat, but I was wanting to get a second look, uh, you know, and see what was going on. Anything there as far as y'all are concerned uh, uh, as it relates to that defensive front right now? No, you know, look, I thought uh, Savea looked really good physically at Pro Day, just looking at him. Um, I actually had a chance to talk with him a little bit about his background in football um, and uh, being, you know, Las Vegas, Desert Pines is where he played. And uh, Johnny Nancy recruited him out of high school to UCLA. But, you know, I, I think, look, a, we, we all talking about the same thing here. An over the ball guy with that SEC size, uh, I think, is I, I think is still a need, especially while, you know, Sadir, what's going on with Sadir health wise. Right. Um uh, but, I, you know, he was out there today, obviously. But, you know, I think the edge – I mean, Baron Sorrell looks great physically. Ethan Burke looks better than he ever has. I, I, it's not like he's gaining a lot of weight or mass, but he looks better than he ever has. Um, and, you know, Trey Moore, Colin Simmons, uh, Justice Finkley, that edge position I think is, uh, is, is grown up so much in this program in the last three years. And now I think it's going to be the best Texas has had at that position this year. Um, I think D line, I think on D line, I think the one thing that is interesting to me is, you know, who's going to really Bobby as spring practice moves along and they really start to get into game planning the Michigan game. Who's going to be your guys that are looked at uh, or as the guys who can anchor against the run? Because you know what Michigan's going to do against you, right? And the spring portal, that may uh, kind of answer that question. But I, I think Savea is going to provide more there in as a run anchor guy than Vernon Broughton. Vernon's more of the disruptor. So that'll be interesting as spring practice moves along uh, and as they really start prepping up for Michigan, kind of where, where the Texas staff's head's at. Yeah, if I can Aren't add to they? that, you know you have athletic pieces there on the defensive line, but you don't have that one key over the ball stopper there. You have a piece, you know, you, you look physically and you say, all right, Sidir is going to be that guy. But as we know, at 372 pounds, how often can you rely on him to be a consistent piece down in and down out? That's the biggest question mark to me. And with him running in that third team unit right now, I think Texas is looking at it like there's still a ways to go to get him on the field uh, with where you'd like him to be. And by the way, I want to mention that uh, Cortland Guillory, uh, the, the defensive back from Klein Oak that's making an official visit to Texas June 7th through 9th, he was at practice Saturday on an unofficial visit. 
Obviously, he's visiting uh, Arizona State, uh, Texas, Texas A&M. Uh, that Texas visits June 7th through 9th. Where he's at on the board, we'll see after spring practice. Interesting. Cortland Guillory. Uh, uh, there's also a report that Andrew Marsh, the, rece the receiver, was on campus today. He was, yeah, he was scheduled to be on campus today. That's correct. I did Got not it. see him with my eyes. He could have been out there. I just I didn't see him. Yeah, no, you guys are – it was very interesting because Matt put up the vi video. Y'all had the long view of the stadium. Y'all had the yes. end zone view. We were whereas, in the north end zone. Yeah, exactly where uh, uh, Matt's putting it up now. There's a little bit more video for and you a guys. Lot of those, a lot of those recruits are down in the end zone back left, south side, uh, back towards back left corner. The one running the, the angle route up here at the top, that is – or the over route, that was Ryan Wingo. That was guy. Ryan Wingo. Yep, the one coming out here that drops it is Isaiah Bond uh, right here, right? That's Bond, yes. guys, correct? Number seven? Yes. Yep, yep, I got it. That's Isaiah okay. Bond. All right, and Niblet's underneath there, and then that's uh, Matthew Golden who elevated there. Uh, Ma as yeah, well. Matthew right. Golden's strong hands, continues to show strong hands to me, and I think that factors in everything he does, right? Kickoff return, uh, catching the football wide receiver. He's a guy with strong hands. All right. Good stuff, guys. That's going to do it for our special update. We'll be back. Uh, and remember this, uh, CJ, you'll be with Coach uh, Bob Shipley and Rod Babers for our new show called The Winning Drive this afternoon at 430. We appreciate uh, you guys doing that. That should be a lot of fun. And you'll have some more information. Coach Sarkeesian has a press conference following practice at 11. So we'll have that as well as we'll have talking ball later tonight, too. Uh, so a lot of information coming out on the Longhorns today. CJ, you, you will be at that press conference for us uh, and be able to relate anything uh, back to us as quickly as possible. If there's any update on Manny Muhammad's injury, although it sounds more like a tweak uh, to me than anything else. All yeah. right, that's that's going to do it. Jerry, y'all have anything else before we get, let people go here? No, nah, man, I just uh, glad the weather held off. When I was in Bastrop on my way up from Houston, it was raining sideways for a while. And I was like, you know, I know I, I had the feeling I was going to end up turning around uh, north, uh, a little west of Bastrop and headed back to high schools on I-10 somewhere. So I'm glad the weather held off this morning. It was looking iffy for a while. All right. Good stuff. CJ, thank you. Jerry Hamilton, thank you. Uh, we'll be back later today with more information, especially after Steve Sarkeesian's press conference. For CJ and Jerry, I'm Bobby Burton. This has been On Texas Football. Hook them.